Do you hear that? That's a bad ball joint. Look at this bushing here. This is a front bushing. Can you hear that? Yeah, it's not supposed to do that at all. Hey, this is us again, and today our job is the control arm. This is the uh, lower control arm of the 2006 Infiniti M45 rear wheel drive. This is actually the uh, passenger side, the right side, but this is the left side, like this, ball, ball joint to the outside bushing in front and the big big bushing in the back this one right here right so what we're going to do here is replace it we'll talk through them uh you know walk through the process that i go through to replace the control arm i've made a video in the past but again uh with that video i was disassembling the whole car and now the engine was not even in the car you know it's a matter of not working practically for a car you're about to drive tomorrow how do you go about this, right? So this is a good one. This is the one I bought, right? And why would you even want to change this? One, even after an alignment and you have good tires and good brakes and all that, you're driving down the road, but your steering wheel is just still jiggling, for one. Two, you know, you might, this one might be a little hard to feel unless you've got very low profile tires and you're really well, well tuned to your car. But, you know, it might feel a little jittery, you know. So, this is a good one. There's no point really discussing it. I looked at it, made sure the bushings are not torn. I checked the ball joint, made sure everything was good, right? So, this one's a good one. When you buy a replacement, make sure you check everything, make sure everything is good. Unfortunately, due to the design, I don't think these ones here, these ball joints are not replaceable. I'm working on something, maybe we'll find a way to do it, but as of now, we're going to go with a no, they're not replaceable. So, you know, whenever you buy them, this right here is your strut mount. Make sure the bushing here is good. This front bushing is good as well, make sure it's not torn or anything. And this one happens to be good, right? I bought a used one, right? As I said, might as well buy a brand new one. Uh, don't buy a, a, a lower control arm for, for core. You're not going to do anything with the metal because so far we don't have any serviceable parts, you know. This back here, usually pretty good, no matter the age of the vehicle, right? Okay, so, 141,000, right? Pretty good. The problem with this one is the ball joint. So check this out. I don't know if you can hear it. Try to pay attention to this. So, with a bolt down, get a bolt there. No, sorry, with a nut down. So get a nut there to help you and now you want to feel it make sure everything around you is pretty quiet okay then we're gonna push it in and out in and out do you hear that that's a bad ball joint that's gonna cause you problems once you install the the, the control arm on your car right so no point in replacing this one buy another one it's so much work actually you remove so many things it's not too bad for me honestly and have to be cognizant that I'm the kind of person that removes engines for fun so but it is a lot of work so don't waste your time with such a thing buy a new one if you have to so here that's one we're testing this ball joint uh, side to side action will be a little hard to test because you can't really tell much but here you can feel it and you can even hear it I don't know if you can hear it with this one that's bad right Compare that with a good one. Should make no clunking, no funky noises. This one's nice and tight, right? But that's as, about as much as this one goes because um, the the suspension mount, the strut mount, it's pretty good. However, this one here, look at this bushing here. This is a front bushing. Can you hear that? Yeah. It's not supposed to do that at all. So, 
So this one's a problem. And how do you tell when, you know, without taking a whole suspend control arm apart, I just said that it's pretty hard work to remove it, right? The way you do is you're driving a car and you, you know, you can feel some clunkiness going up up front, going on up front. And two, you're, when you slam on the brakes, you hear clunk. It grabs, then it clunks. Usually, it's a result of this one right here. Because, you know, as I said, so this is how it's set up. Well, the other way, this one, right? Once you stop, but then it still clunks. And obviously, this is my hand, so I don't have as much force as 4,000 pounds of metal. But usually, you can feel it. So this is not good. And sometimes when you go over a bump or anything, you hear that? It's even more magnified. So that's why I'm replacing this one right here. This one was pretty obvious. And uh, I'm looking at this, trying to see if there are ways we can come, come up with polyurethane bu bushings for this, for the front. You know, for this one and this one at least. The ball joint is kind of the, the main problem. We need to find a way to replace that. Otherwise, the whole thing becomes useless. As I said, this one back here, rarely any problems. You know, if I even figure out how to remove this thing. But yeah, so that's it. That's why we're here today. So in the next few minutes or many minutes of video, I might be quiet, I might be silent, but that's just me going through the motions of replacing everything. I have most of the stuff I'll be doing here spoken about in different videos, but you know, let's let's get to it, okay? Cool, good luck. So one of the first things I like to do, well, of course, remove your wheels, jack up your car, secure it on jack stands. Mine's secure enough. I mean, if I shake it hard enough, it's going to fall off, I guess, but it's good. Right now, the wheels are turned to the right, so it's kind of locked here. But, you know, whenever you lift it, it could be sitting up straight. So one of the first things I like to do is remove the outer tie rod, castle nut and whatnot. What a connection. So remove that as well. I removed the outer tie rod and castle nut and bolt and you know and ball joint as well as the ball joint underneath there. This ball joint. Down here, what you got is this one here. So you have you have a cotter pin that goes through this hole over here. And then you have a nut. So what I'm going to do is remove both cutter pins. This one here and the one underneath there. And, and then just knock those loose. Then we can keep going. Okay.
Okay, now that this nut is finally out, I have to talk about what the hell I was doing down there. One, what I usually do is, when I was banging down on it, right, I put the nut back on. The reason being, I want to bang on the nut rather than banging on the on the stud itself. If I banged on the stud itself and damaged the threads, I would not be able to put another nut on there. So the, the problem I ran into was that, well, I banged it, and then the nut got very tight onto the studs, onto the stud, sorry. So how do you remove it? What I did was I got a jack underneath it, put pressure on it, and that kept it, kept it steady. And I was able to go there with my wrench, ratcheting wrench by the way, best thing, one of my best tools in the garage, and I was able to remove it nicely. So now, so that's one of the first things you remove. Work these things in whichever order you please. For me, the next thing I usually get Fourteen millimeters for the knuckle stopper. This is what stops how far the knuckle goes, right? Fourteen milli. This one here is a 17, and this is for the strut. Again, I've got videos discussing that in better detail. Let's loosen this. You have to remember to secure the other side because you have a nut on that side, so 17 on the other side. This is going to be a really heavy assembly. Remember, we're going to remove the bottom too. So this assembly is going to be very, very heavy. What I'm going to do for this is actually remove the brake caliper bolts, the brake bracket bolts. These two big guys over here, the 22 millimeters, that hold the bracket onto the rotor. Well, the bracket onto the hub and the caliper onto the bracket and in turn the rotor. And... You'll see what I do, basically, to me, it's a shortcut. I'm trying to remove everything together, set it down. But before I do all that, I have to release the, I have to release the, the brackets holding the uh, ABS sensor. I mean, I could remove it here, but you should remove it here, by the way. I'd say that for most people, you should. I'm not going to, but that's a 10 millimeter. Do it easy and pull it out. If you've got a lot of rust in your area, you might not want to mess with it because you'll probably damage it trying to fix it. So for me, remove that. Second one, third, fourth. Okay, so the ABS wires are loose. Now I'm going to get the, the brake, the brake stuff. I remember those one on the other side of the brake uh, of the strut. Then you've got this one here, and you've got this one here. That's fully released from the strut. Strut is now free to go. 
you know, once I remove the upper control arm, this one here. Finally, well, either way, just get this. You have to open one side, fight with it, then pull it. I'm pulling it to open it a little more. Then the other side is going to be a little easier to move. It's still pretty tight, so open it up a little more by pulling it, stretching it. Man, finally. So there you go, okay? And now, get my jack again. Lift the bottom side of it. Get my jack again. Got to the bottom of the, of this. Jack it up. You can see it going up. Okay. It doesn't have to go so high. All I'm trying to do is I'll be putting some force on, on this side right here while trying to remove these bolts over here. So while doing that, I want to make sure I don't tear any unnecessary bushings, you know, apart. So that's what I'm going to do. So what's this? 22 over here. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this and the brake should be ready to get out, right? Should be. What I'm going to do is just lay this caliper down over there. At this point, I have pretty much gotten the whole thing ready. I have removed, you know, all those. I've loosened the lower bolt of the caliper and now I'm going to loosen the upper bolt while holding this thing for now. See, it's already loose. For me, I'm going to remove the whole assembly together. It's very heavy. And set it down over there. So that was the main reason. For me, the reason I undid all the wiring and all that was to be able to lay it down without straining, straining anything. I did not want to disassemble the brakes, but you might as well do it. I know I did my brakes recently and I'm fine, so I didn't want to do it again. And now I'm going to go up and now I'm coming to the other side of this. I'm going to loosen the, the top side of the, the nuts on, uh, on the top side of the strut mount.
Now we're going to go back down here, right? Remember the the drill when removing the the, the strut. So now the whole assembly is much much lighter, you know, when it comes to removing it. 17 for the upper control arm, and we should be good to go. Well, almost good to go. Well, I'm sorry, the 14s. Sorry, could you see that? I was, <laughs> you didn't see that. Anyway, I loosened this one right here, 14 millimeter. Okay, that out. This one should be pretty easy to remove as well. There you go. And again, I deliber de deliberately chose not to. Sorry, here you go. I deliberately chose not to remove not to disconnect this but you'll see if you disconnected this it'd be that much easier so just remember on the way back in the first thing to go on there should be this right here right it goes around it okay cool i'll set this down as well And now you should be able to just remove this. Course it's not gonna move. Why? Because of this right here. Stabilize the bar. Can you hear that? Doesn't sound very healthy, but we'll check it out. So here's a stabilizer link. I might have referred to it as a bar, but I mean link. I don't like the sound that my upper control arms make, so I'm gonna test those as well. They feel okay, but what I'm going to do is actually take them out.
Again, you definitely don't have to do this. I'm only doing this to check my, my bushings, make sure everything's okay. Okay, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done by now. And what we're about to do is get the control arm out of the way. This right here. So you've got three, three bolts that you're worried about. One is this one here. Can you see it back there? And it's got a nut on this side that you can't really remove. For good, you know, with good reason. It's just nestled in there. So we have to remove that. We have to remove this one here. And we have another one on the other side of it. There. That that one feel, you know, covered in gunk. That's the other bolt that we have to remove. So it so one of the things to do is that I'll tell you once you remove this bolt, you'll get to a point you can't really back it up any further because this boot is gonna be in the way. But what you do with a car like this, uh, have the keys over there, push the push button into the first position, turn this all the way to the left, if you're dealing with the left side, then turn off the car. come here you'll notice that there's a little more clearance right and that's how you're gonna go ahead and remove that get that out of the way okay so again it's gonna be a boring video of me just fighting that but that's what I'm doing now okay 17 here 19 there completely. I'll leave it there for now. So sometimes there's a complication, right? So this is the, uh, the exterior one. This one's the one that's more accessible. You can see it. The other one, you can see it there. But then the catch is when you're doing a V8, see this whiteness, this light material? That's the catalytic converter it's right there it's right on top of it so you have to have a pretty good selection of tools to be able to get there i tried my breaker bar it was too tall it was banging against it um you can't really use much else because you know what's right here The steering column comes here. So it's a little tricky. What I have is this. It's a really shallow um, 17 milli socket. And I'm going to try to make it work. It's a little hard coming this direction. Because I barely have any leverage. But we'll see. Oh, there you go.
There you go. Comes out like this. Shouldn't screw it up because can't really install it the other way. One side's higher than the other. So, yeah. Anyway, there you go. And of course, it goes without saying that I, I said it in my previous video that the left side, the right side is much harder to remove this end because of the fuel tubes over there. So looking at this one here, yep, torn as well. Not as bad as the other side, but yeah, definitely not healthy. So, the replacement, as you'll notice, came with a piece of stabilizer link, so you have to remove that. It's like they didn't really bother to remove it any other way, right? <laughs> I'll put it on the floor, step on it, get going. Uh, at this point, installation is a reversal removal. I might record something, but for the most part, I'm just going backwards. So, I'll just, I'll think about it. I'll decide in a bit. So we're fine, and this is it. Now we're done, we're going back.
all right game over for the most part at this point uh, I've already replaced all the suspension components I need to I'm going to get the wheels set them on the on the cars you know set them on the hubs uh, fasten them I'm gonna remove the car from the jack stands set the car on the ground tighten my wheels and then I'll remember to go up and tighten my strut nuts right the top part of my strut fasteners so that's it that's as much as that's all it takes to to do well <laughs> I say all uh, in quotes kinda because it did take a while it does take a while I'd say if I said two hours per per side that would be kinda accurate I was taking breaks and I was doing a little bit of this and that but yeah it's possible it's doable you might have seen me struggling with the brake at some point you could be smarter than me decide to disassemble it but as I said I I knew what I was doing and I decided not to disassemble the brake because I'd replace them recently oh, yeah.